Hello everyone and welcome to summer series free classes. This is class number four and today we are going to be talking about how to plan a workout. So I work with and meet a lot of people who, especially right now after COVID and not having gyms open and all that stuff, want to get back to working out and feel like they need to get in shape but don't really know where to start. So if that is you, like you're not quite sure how to put a workout together, or you're the type of person that always goes to classes because you don't know how to plan a workout, um, or you need to work out at home but you're not really sure what to do, or you are the type of person who goes to the gym and you're intimidated and you don't know where to start, and maybe you just do a few machines and then go home. If any of those fit you, then watch the rest of this. Um, this is gonna be geared towards people who aren't like professionals in the gym, who don't know exactly what they're doing, but who want to get fit and just need a little help figuring out what to do. This is probably one of the most common conversations that I have with people is they wanna get fit, they're not sure how, and I like to just try and give a few basics to help people get started. So um, we'll go ahead and jump in. And I am doing this a bit early. This was scheduled for 12 p.m., but I have another event that I need to attend. Um, it's actually already started. I'm just going to be going a little bit late. Um, so apologies for that, but this will stay up for you to watch for quite a while. Um, total side note, if you guys see this right here, suggestion for you. This is a travel diffuser. It's a portable diffuser from doTERRA. Um, so cool, I love it. It's just this tiny little handheld thing. Um, I've been taking it everywhere. It fits in a car, like where you put your coffee cups, and it works so good. Um, and it actually does relate to working out. I use it this morning. I use it um, if I'm doing like a bike or a run inside. Um, I put Breathe essential oil in here, and sometimes maybe something like lemon or bergamot, and that helps to open up the airways. It also helps to fresh in the air when you're working out. Um, so it kind of gives a little extra motivation and inspiration. So I know it's a total side note, but this is like my new favorite thing. I'm carrying it around the whole house. Um, and you don't have to unplug and all that stuff. I have diffusers in every room that are plugged in, but this one I can just pick up and carry anywhere. So um, if you want to get one of these, shoot me a message, or you can just go to mydoterra.com slash renewalfitcoach. All my information is there and you can look this up. It's called the Pilot Diffuser. Okay, total side note. So let's go ahead and jump into the workout information. All right, so number one, have a plan and a purpose when you work out. So for instance, are you trying to lose weight? Are you trying to gain muscle? A lot of people are trying to do both at the same time. Do you wanna work out your full body? Are you working one body part? Do you wanna do more cardio? Do you wanna do more strength? Have some idea of what your goals are so that then you can plan some sort of workout plan around those. That will also help shape everything else that you do if you know your goal. If your goal is aesthetics and lean muscle and a certain look, you're gonna work out a little bit different way than if you're just trying to burn calories and lose some weight a little bit more quickly. Okay, so know your priorities, know your plan, know your purpose. That'll help you plan out your workout. From there, you can then plan your week. So this is a big thing that I have to work with a lot on people, a lot with people, is planning out your week because that's gonna affect how your workouts go. So figure out how many days a week you have to devote to training and what kind of time you have. So if you have two hours to work out, that's your workout's gonna look a lot different than if you have 30 minutes to work out. Okay, so figure that out. And then also know um, are you, can you be at the gym every single day? Because if you can, you're gonna have to need to arrange your workouts a lot differently than if you say, look, I have three days a week, I need to get everything in on those three days, okay? So what you would want to do primarily is think about, you don't want to work any muscle group back to back. So you want about 48 hours between each workout for your muscles to recover because it's after the workout that your, bus, your muscles, you've torn your muscles basically, these little micro tears during your workout. After that for 48 hours is when you rebuild the muscle, you repair, um, they grow a little bit stronger each time, a little bit bigger. So if you are going into the gym and you're doing um, a leg day on Monday, then you probably don't wanna go do like a hard run on Tuesday 
if your goal is to really build that muscle. Now, if you're someone like me who does triathlons, it's gonna be a whole different schedule. Um, or if you say go to a group fitness class and you work your full body on Monday, then you probably don't wanna go back on Tuesday and do a heavy chest and back workout if you just worked out some of those muscles in that class and vice versa. So you do a hardcore full body workout on Monday and then Tuesday you're gonna go to a strength training class group workout you're not really gonna get much benefit because you're not giving your muscles enough time to rest. So that's the primary thing to consider is if you're working out three days a week, then you can probably you probably wanna hit your full body every single time you go into the gym so that you optimize how many times you're working out those muscles during the week. But if you can be there every single day, then you might do a traditional split kind of routine where it's chest one day, back one day, legs one day, shoulders one day, and biceps, triceps one day, or something like that, and you throw core in there. Um, and then this will also affect when you do cardio. So if you really wanna do some cardio, you're trying to lose weight, then maybe you do your full body workout one day and cardio the next so that you give your muscles a chance to rest. Um, or if you're doing a traditional split, then you need to figure out one of those days, maybe you tack on an extra 20 to 30 minutes of cardio after your shoulder day or something. Um, so have some idea, kind of look at your schedule, look at your time, and then look at your goals. From there, that's basically how you're gonna create your workout plan, knowing, you know, most of the people that I work with are trying to lose weight, tone up their muscles, and so they need to be doing both cardio and strength training, and most of them are either brand new to working out, so five to six days is overwhelming, um, or they just don't have the time. So a lot of people that I work with, it's a three to four day workouts per week, full body every single time, or it might be something like upper body one day, lower body the next, cardio the next, and then repeat. Okay, so those are a couple different options of how you would figure out what exercises you're gonna do every day. But know that going into your weeks, you can plan ahead, you can mentally prepare, you can make sure that your muscles are rested. Don't just go into the gym not knowing what you're doing and just do like a full body workout every single day. That's not gonna get you anywhere. And then know your goal and your starting point, okay? So in addition to the goals we already listed, um, you will need to know are you a beginner? Are you advanced? Um, do you wanna focus on muscle endurance? Like, again, someone like me who's doing triathlons, it's a little bit more of a priority right, right now to me that I have muscle endurance as well as strength, but I don't necessarily need to build a lot of muscle size. That's not really important to me right now. Where some people really wanna gain muscle, they wanna gain size, um, they want to get some either, you know, if it's a woman, it's usually they want to be very toned, which to be honest, that's basically building size of muscle for most women. And don't worry, you're not going to look like a bodybuilder. It's very hard to get big. Um, and for a lot of men, it's building strong muscle. So depending on what your goal is, and if you're starting out or if you're advanced, that's going to affect what your workouts look like. So typical rep ranges that you want to look at with your weights is if you're a beginner or you're going for muscle endurance, you're gonna do more of like a 15 to 20 rep range with lighter weights. So it should be by like your last rep, no matter what you do, your last rep should always be taxing. It shouldn't feel easy to knock out 20 reps of something. Um, you should be challenged by the end of this. And then if you're more like intermediate level, you've been working out for a while, and or you want to gain some muscle size, then you're gonna work out in the eight to 12 rep range with a moderate weight. So heavier than you were using in the 15 to 20. And then if you are a more advanced person and you're going for strength, then you're gonna do more of a one to six rep range with a much heavier weight. So in this rep range, you're doing like, it might be hard to do three reps of something. So you're using a heavy, heavy weight. Now, the reason too why this is beginner to advance is if you're a beginner, but you want to get really strong, it doesn't really matter. You do not want to start with one to six reps of a super heavy weight because your body, your muscles, your core, your stabilizer muscles are not gonna be prepared for you going in and doing like a 300 pound squat. Even if you wanna get really strong, you need to work your way up to that. So kind of regardless of whether you want to 
build muscle or get stronger, if you're just starting out, you should always start in the lighter rep range and let your muscles learn these movements, help your muscles learn to recruit the right fibers, make sure the right muscles are actually working and you're not letting different dominant muscles take over. So you're always gonna start light and work your way up to the heavier weights and the lower rep ranges. Okay, and then um, another tip is if you're going more for weight loss or health or both, um, then you, especially if you are short on time, like you're one of those people you say, I have three days a week I can work out, maybe four, then focus the most on working your big muscle groups. Um, so if you're, you know, if you're more of a bodybuilder, you have a very specific aesthetic look you're going for, this isn't as important. But if you're just looking at, you know, I want to get toned, I want to lose some weight, then what you want to focus on is things like your chest, your back, your shoulders, and your legs, because these are your biggest muscle groups. So when you work those, you're going to burn the most calories, you're going to build the most muscle, and the more muscle you have, the higher your metabolism goes, the more energy you require every day. So that's where I would put your focus. And then you can use maybe one day or a few exercises here and there where you're gonna focus on smaller muscles like your biceps, your triceps, your calves, um, some of the smaller things like that. Um, and you should be incorporating in there some warm up type exercises and different things to activate smaller muscles like your um, different trapezius muscles, your rhomboids, your glute medius, things like that. Um, so those should be focused on. That's a whole other topic, though. <clears throat> um, but don't spend, like, for instance, here's a lot of people's situation. Women who have some saggy skin right here. Most of my female clients want to work on their triceps to get this stronger. But that doesn't need to necessarily be the primary focus. We might put more focus on that than any other small muscle. But when you're working out your chest and your back, you're still going to be working the triceps. So if weight loss is your primary goal, and then you also really want to get rid of some kind of underarm flab and build that muscle, then that becomes kind of a secondary thing that you'll throw in a couple of days a week. But when you hit the big muscles, you're basically going to get the most bang for your buck. So focus the most on those. So that kind of leads me to my next point, is that if you are just starting out and or you... Um, don't don't have a gym to go to, maybe you're working at a home, or you go into the gym and you're just not quite sure what to do, then I would say start planning a workout by focusing on the big muscles. So things like squats, maybe lunges, depending on your form. A lot of people don't do lunges well, so I don't necessarily say to everyone, just go do lunges. A lot of time that, that you need a coach to walk you through that, or at least a good mirror and understanding of what a lunge should look like but things like squats and lunges and then push-ups for your chest and then some sort of like a back row or maybe a lap pull down but back rows are usually easier at home um, with different bands and things and dumbbells so those three even if you just did squats push-ups back rows and then add in a core exercise like a plank of like some variation of a plank that's going to hit pretty much all your main muscle groups um and then from there, you can also add on things like butt exercises, which are very important, actually, because if you're not building your butt, most of us have um, muscles in our butt that are asleep, is one way of saying it, or they're just not firing because we don't use a lot. We're sitting on our butts most of the day. Um, so you can look at, you can go to my YouTube channel if you want more like specific glute exercises or specific workouts. I do have a lot of things on my YouTube channel at Renewal Fitness Coaching, or Renewal Fit Coach is in the URL. Um, but those would be kind of your primary things to focus on, especially if you're just starting out. Just stick with the basics. So skip the crazy Instagram routines you see from people jumping up and down and doing this and that and doing these multi-joint movements where you're like squat and then push up and press and back row and bicep curl and all in one exercise, totally unnecessary. Just stick with the basics, focus on good form, focus on feeling those muscles work, make sure you've got those down before you go into crazy complicated movements that most of the time are completely unnecessary. Um, so, so just pick a couple, pick one for chest, pick one for back, pick one for legs and pick a core exercise. That's a really basic way to start, especially at home. 
Um, if you want some band exercises, I have a video, I think it's still on this page, but it's also on my YouTube, um, about resistance band exercises, things that you can do when traveling or at home. And I gave a bunch of uh, different band exercises that are great for home, including some back exercises. Um, and then if you have a gym uh, and you go in and you are just intimidated and you're lost and you don't want to walk around looking silly or you're not sure where to do squats and push-ups, like maybe there's not a big area that makes that easy to do, then what's also really simple, I don't necessarily recommend this right off the bat, but it's somewhere to start, is find your section of machines. And a lot of gyms have kind of a setup where it's like upper body or maybe like chest, back, arms, and legs. And it kind of goes in some sort of order like that. So if you if you have, don't know anything else to do and you just are scared of looking stupid, um, aside from getting a personal trainer, which is the best way to start, you can always go in and just do one, pick a chest machine and do a chest exercise and pick one of the back machines, do back. So same thing, just pick one for each muscle group and just move through the machines. And these sometimes can help get you used to the movements before you move on to dumbbells, get an idea of what they kind of look and feel like, and then you can go on to dumbbells from there once you've gained a little bit of confidence. Um, I also recommend that kind of going back to the other types of exercises, that when you start your workout, you start with a core exercise and a glute exercise if you're gonna be working your lower body because everything else is dependent on core strength and balance. So when you activate your core and activate your glutes first before a lower body workout, this kind of helps get everything firing, everything working together. It helps to create stability. It helps you work the right muscles. So kind of start there to get warmed up and start activating that core so it's nice and strong for everything else that depends on your core to be holding you together um, while you're doing these exercises. And then write your workout ahead of time. So kind of going back to when you plan out your week and you figure out your goals before you go to the gym or before you start your workout for the day, write the whole thing down. Um, it can be a little bit tedious, but just to start with, just in the beginning. So you might write out push-ups, 10 reps, um, back row, 15 reps, squats, 20 reps, plank, 45 seconds. Something like that, okay? Again, if we're just doing really basic. Um, and then maybe you say you're gonna do two rounds of that, or you're gonna do three rounds of that. Um, or if you wanna work out each muscle group at a time, you might say chest, 10 reps times three. You're gonna do that three times, then you'll move on to back. Back, 15 reps times three. Finish that, move on. So write down what you're gonna do ahead of time so that you're not kind of floundering around and wasting time and trying to figure out what to do and um, get your plan together ahead of time. So. Just to kind of re recap, know your goal, know your purpose, and then plan your week. Figure out how much time you have, which days you're going to work out, and which muscles you're going to work out each day. And then create your plan based on the different rep ranges and weights we talked about. And know that on Monday you're going to do this, on Wednesday you're going to do this. You have your reps down. Once you start getting used to it, then you can also write down your weight. So once you kind of figure out, you know what, I think 15 pounds is good for me on this exercise, write that down. Then you don't even have to guess that. And then you would every maybe four to six to eight weeks revamp that. So if in six weeks you're like, you know what, 15 pounds is actually pretty easy for me on this, then you would up it to 20 pounds. And keep, keep notes of this. You don't have to track every single workout you do, but it is helpful to keep notes on your workout so that you remember what to do, you get in the habit, and then you can also go back and see how you've progressed, which keeps you moving forward, keeps you getting stronger, keeps you from plateauing, and is also very encouraging. It helps to see when you've made progress, when you're doing better, that what you're doing is working. So maybe even if the scale is kind of throwing you off, it's not saying what you want, you can look and go, man, but I'm so much stronger than I was six weeks ago. So that's kind of an extra little bonus tip. Um, so that is all I have for you today. Um, hopefully that helps to get much more specific in that. It really requires more research and that's why I like to work with people one-on-one -on -one is because then we can really dive specifically into your goals and what your workout should look like and what the weight should look like and all of that and gear very specific exercises for each person based on their need. But obviously I can't do that in this situation. So this is kind of just your foundational level of how to plan some sort of workout 
Um, if you need more help with workout ideas, one, there's always YouTube. Like I said, I have a YouTube channel with a lot of exercises on there. You can look up, I mean, Google. You can look up all the exercises in the world. But if you're really still confused, that's why I'm here, is to help guide you through that. And there's, I know there's so much information out there. So that's why I like to help kind of help you sort through that so it's not so overwhelming, it's not so confusing. I can help break these things down for you and help you pick what's good for you, what what you should do and maybe what's better just for that girl on Instagram to do but is not gonna help you. <laughs> um, so feel free to contact me if you need any help. Um, I can always do like a free 20 minute consult with you or we can book a full fitness assess assessment or nutrition assessment to help get you going. And then if that's beneficial, you can always sign up for six sessions of training or 12 sessions of training just to get you going. Even if you don't want a trainer long term, it can be very, very helpful to just at least start with me. Do, again, six, 12 sessions maybe just to kind of get in the habit, see what it feels like, learn proper form, learn some good exercises. Then you can run with it from there. And then maybe when you start to hit a plateau or you're not sure what to do anymore, we can always pick up back up with a few more sessions. So um, you can do that at renewalfitcoach.com. You can see my programs, you can sign up for an assessment, or you can send me an email, a message, if you just want like a quick little consult or you have a question. You can also use Messenger here um, on Facebook. You can shoot me a message in the Messenger as well if that's a little bit easier for you. So I hope this is helpful to you. Um, if you have any other questions about this, leave them in the comments. I will still see them after this has ended and I can get back to you on them. Or again, you can always send me a message if you have a more private question um, that maybe others are not gonna benefit from as much. But if you have a question that others will benefit from, please put that down below so we can all kind of share and learn together. Um, so that is it. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a wonderful 4th of July weekend.